Jim Joyce, we made it another week. Another week. <laughs> another week. A little touch and go this week. We got a, a great guest coming up, but it was a little touch and go. We had a little schedule management that we had to do. I, that, that assumes that we actually plan these things, which, you know, again, for our <laughs> listeners and viewers, we do try. I mean, we're, we're all busy people, so we do try to book people somewhat ahead, um, but some days right. it's not. So, um, but uh, we, we forget. But also, um, <laughs> I don't know what made me look this up, because as I was waiting for you to, to join in, I'm like, what, you know, June 15th, is there like any kind of holiday, anything going on? Because like, I feel like every Wednesday, we should just celebrate Wednesday, which is cool. But apparently today is National Smile Power Day. I have no idea what that means. I didn't go that deeper, but, you know, happy smile day. National happy smile smile day, man. I like it. I like it. I like it. The power of a smile for sure. So, and and, um, I did a whole, go ahead, go ahead. I did a whole, we did a whole, uh, we did a whole analysis, like a, a medical analysis on the impact of the smile that we issued a blog on. Oh, yeah. Our health beacon device, your health beacon device oh. smiles at you after you do your medications. So, um, oh. you know, all the awesome. medicinal effect. And there's something like over, there's dozens and dozens of peer reviewed studies on the clinical impact of the smile. So that's, there you that's go. amazing. Uh, yeah. I, you know, as we post this, I uh, would love to, uh, you know, maybe you can comment with a link for our listeners and viewers. That's, fa- that's fascinating. Um, Sounds good. Sounds so good. let's smile. And I love your I love your outfit and jacket, but um, let's not talk fashion. Um, let's go and get moving. Um, and we're going to welcome uh, Rob George. Um, as, 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 as I'm letting him in, maybe. Uh, a quick a intro. Little, quick quick intro well he'll give a, a long intro i hope of himself we got time yeah yeah so rob is um rob is joining us from hamilton beach where he is head of business development uh, business development extraordinaire from Ham- hamilton beach that we are that health beacons lucky enough to be in business with in ireland uh, in rob is an honorary irish person Ways Irish. I think you have Irish descent, Rob. But I'll let you introduce yourself properly. Uh, I, welcome I, to the I'm ju- welcome to the podcast, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, Thanks, welcome. Jim. I just wanted to add one thing. I think we actually met, if I'm not mistaken, in Ireland, right at a Health Excel in Dublin. We if did. I'm not mistaken, we, we did. We were you the same are table. Was, All right. We sat at the same table, and I was the uh, the odd man out in the uh, <laughs> digital health reflection, coming from the consumer product space, and everyone's like, well, "Why did they invite this guy here?" So, uh, but no, happy to be, happy to be on the uh, on the call with you both today. So, uh, I've been waiting like over a year for this invitation. So, I'm super, <laughs> super excited. <thanks. laughs> well, well, now I'm kind of the too. mail. Between Health Excel and communicating with Jim all the time, I'm sure you've learned something about digital health. So welcome to the shadow of digital health therapy. As as you know, this is therapy for all of us. So, right, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, no, thank you, Jim. So, um, yeah, my name is Rob George, uh, and I lead the uh, corporate development and strategy uh, partnership slash M and A practice for, uh, Hamilton beach brands, which is, uh, North America's, well, I think we'll hold this, but 120 year old appliance company. So we're in 57 different categories of, of kitchen appliances. And, uh, I was charged at the beginning of 2020 to, uh, lead the company, develop a new strategy with, with other stakeholders internally. And then, uh, you know, forge that road to where we're going to go. So it turned out the timing was perfect. Uh, I had been there, you know, a couple days before uh, they, <laughs> the, world, the world shut down. So it's great. You don't even know who you're working with and you're like, okay, go home. So, uh, but no, uh, it, it all, it all ties very nicely together because, you know, uh, you know, my past and like my journey started, uh, you know, 40 some odd years ago in, in upstate New York. And it had always been a, a journey, if you will, of uh, reinvention and managing like finite resources. So are, it all, are you, it all are you, worked out. Are you way. taking us to your birth date? Or is that what it is? I, could, I, could. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if I want to recollect that because I. Well, I just gave you a compliment. You. you said 40 plus, right? So I just gave you a compliment. I know, you look young. You, know, young. you look. <laughs> No, don't do that to me, Eugene. <laughs> no, so, uh, but yeah, so, you know, started, you know, grew up in upstate New York. Uh, parents were both school teachers, math and English, so that's a perfect mix. And, uh, you know, 
<laughs> absolutely complimentary. And uh, but was able to you know work my way through you know college, and you know like like all of us, lots of different experiences, and and really came out of uh, Villanova University with a degree in accounting, which you know makes you really qualified to do everything. And uh, so got, you know got my start in, in in accounting, and realized pretty quickly you know great foundation at Deloitte, but that this wasn't what I wanted to do with with my whole life. And so I uh, moved into actually pharmaceuticals from there. So I had an uncle who was at Astra and uh, I spent a good four years uh, learning the pharma world from one of the best jobs I think you can ever have in the world, which is uh, being a field salesperson. And so it, it's a it's a tenacious job if, if you can hack it. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have Nexium, Prilosec, uh, launch Crestor uh, and Accord EC uh, all in the early 2000s. But I think, you know, that job really was a, a tremendous brick in my overall journey and actually tied in. And if I, if I hadn't put in that time of developing relationships, learning, you know, about, you know, pharma and how uh, a little bit, how the medical community worked, we would never be here together. And, and I think to me, like when I look back and reflect on my life of all the interesting uh, things that happen along it, you're like, you have no idea why you ended up, you know, walking around selling drugs. Uh, but, but it turned out that, it, that <laughs> there's a, there was probably a higher meaning for it. So. Yeah, yeah, so you know, you went from consumer appliance. So you're, so you are, you went from sales rep, uh, yeah. you know, multiple other roles, and then you ended up in, uh, you know, kind of manufacturing, and then now consumer right. appliance and starting to dig into healthcare, right, you know, yeah. as part of that strategy, right? Exactly, Jim. So that that's how that's how the the journey went. So, you know, and I have to I have to credit my wife for giving me the courage to reinvent myself after business school, because I had, I really nicely gone, I'll call it accounting, consulting, pharmaceuticals, business school, and I was heading back towards that space, uh, probably a pharma, when I really, I really took a few years to to to, to focus on different functional areas. So you're right, you know, without going totally into it, like I did on-site manufacturing, uh, and then you know back-end distribution, and so putting together together, you know, 20 some odd plus years of really honing your skills, which is the way I looked at it, right? Like, I'm like, I want to like absorb everything. I want to, you know, the kid of, of school teachers, right? I want, I want to like learn, learn, learn. Uh, and so that, that brought us nicely to, to 2020 uh, when, when I started with Hamilton Beach. So. Awesome. And, and you know, your, your comment earlier that like, we maybe wouldn't be here because of the pharmaceutical experience talking digital health, which is kind of fascinating to me, right? Because I've, I yeah. personally spent three and a half years kind of educating about digital health within pharma. And the fact that you're here inspired by a pharmaceutical role is actually kind of fascinating. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being too philosophical today. No, I don't. I never think it's too philosophical. <laughs> I think that I, I, th I think a couple of things. So Jim's right. So I, I sometimes think about the details of some of the illustrious brands I've worked on, but I guarantee you, you probably touched one of them today. So whether that's a Kleenex facial tissue, uh, plenty of uh, Kimberly Clark personal products, uh, whether that's Reynolds Wrap aluminum foil, you've put on a pair of Nikes, uh, you've had a Chobani yogurt, a Faya yogurt, something from Danone or General Mills. If you've gone to Starbucks and had a caramel macchiato, uh, I've, I've touched all of those products in my consumer <laughs> product space. Right, so I so that all of those experiences, uh, all all layered together, and I think as you know, doing that connectivity work, Eugene, of saying, okay, where is Hamilton Beach right now in early 2020, and where do we want it to go, and what are those unmet needs, and, and that's where, from my time in pharma, really understanding, you know. I'll call it the empathy of, of, of care is what I really got out of that job. You know, I mean, we all have stories of things we've seen in the hospital setting, but for me, I went from being, you know, that I'll call it punk, you know, college graduate kid is like doing fine and like, you know, going out to, you know, really seeing like the hard work that clinicians are doing. And so when I started doing the strategy work with Hamilton Beach, you know, this, I'll call it opportunity or vertical of, um, 
uh, of, of home health and wellness really came to the forefront. And it was interesting as we did research, it turned out that uh, brand, while it's been around for 120 years, nearly everyone when we did a survey thought we were already in healthcare because we were we are in personal care. So we had that right to play, but then it was this, this idea of, okay, how can a brand that's in nearly, you know, household penetration of nearly 90% in the US, so it's a trusted brand. How can we parlay that into bringing that uh, to help in the digital health space? And as I investigated and looked at digital health, I probably took it from the, the view of someone who clearly has like been all over the, you know, been all over the path, right? And so I didn't, I didn't, see, I didn't see us as not belonging at the party, you know, uh, that, that hardware uh, or physical devices could play a space in digital health and help in, maybe enhance that experience where possible, so. You, you know, I mean, to me, it's fascinating. When I first heard about this, I was like, duh, right? I mean, the light bulb went off because like, if you think about, um, you know, your, your individual health is usually a combobulation of your family health, right? Because we all impact yep. each other and where do families spend a lot of the time? You know, it is the kitchen um, or slash dining room. And, and you know, there are, concept around food as medicine, but also the medicine itself could be near the food, right? I mean, you know, we, yeah. we as patients, so I, I was kind of like, oh my God, what? That, that, that's a brilliant partnership um, that, that, that you guys yeah, announced. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's funny. I, I think um, when, you know, and Rob will let you describe it more, but when, so, so for the people that don't know, because I do, probably do oh, yeah. promoting myself out there, <laughs> but so Hamilton, <laughs> Hamilton Beach and Health Beacon have taken the Health Beacon, uh, you know, injection care system and launched it into the U.S. market, um, you know, in, you know, looking to help patients in areas like diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis, some of the more common reasons people might take an injection. And, and I was saying how the, the connective tissue felt a little bit at the beginning was um, we used to we used to show on our website, a picture of a health beacon device sitting in the kitchen, you know, as a kitchen appliance. And then the whole concept on health beacon largely was that, uh, you know, a sharp spin shouldn't be a beacon of sickness or illness, but it should be a health beacon. It should be a beacon of health. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Rob, you saw that. I, that's what you told me anyway. You said you saw that photo and you were like, Oh, wow, this right. could be an appliance. <laughs> no. So I, I saw that, that photo early on as I was looking for opportunities and I thought to myself I'm like whoa they're already there like they they view themselves as an appliance I thought of it as an appliance as like a you know sheer like simpleton right I'm like oh it's an appliance you know it has a plug it's it's on the counter we're in business it looks like a toaster uh, uh, I was just bit. gonna add to that that's funny yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's much more elegant and beautiful than a toaster and obviously way more uh scientific and complex but uh it, it had that it actually is similar in size uh and so yeah we you know things things align you know uh i tell the the abridged story uh is that i had been looking at connected health systems where Hamilton Beach could be a partner to someone. And ironically, and Jim knows the story and it ties in really to who, who I am too. Uh, I had worked on a deal it, like, you know, contracts was in place and things were going along pretty well on it. And um, it pretty much collapsed in the 36 <laughs> hours, like complete disappointment. And uh, I was outside and I was playing a wide and to someone who knew uh, of Health Beacon. And so I just, you know, quickly ran back inside and like, started figuring it out, wrote, it, wrote an email, uh, and then very quickly was able to meet Jim and Kieran. Uh, and the rest has really been history. So I think that we were joking about this last night that he's in. Charleston, South Carolina, walking along and, you know, looking for a, a, an appliance company that has a health connectivity. And he runs into a, to a guy connected to the Irish government that knows me. <laughs> you know, so, so, the, so it's kind of like the Mossad or something, you know, like the Irish have little tentacles everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, you can't, you can't make it up. And I'm usually pretty, pretty reserved and quiet about what I'm working on. But this day right. I just said, oh, I can't yeah. believe it. So what are you looking for? I mean, I think remote patient monitoring, connected health systems as like our country has this growing problem. I'm an appliance provider. I want to grow into this space, into this vertical, and I can't find anybody to go to the dance with me. And he's like, 
it's I think it's a smaller company in Ireland. Have you heard of Health Beacon? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm like, all right, here we go. So, so yeah. So <laughs> one of the things, Rob, I was interested in was, you know, just kind of moving outside of, uh, you know, us working together, but is just your perspective on, you know, on the, the appliance, like the digital health appliance, because you've done, you know, you know, you know, obviously we don't want to go into any confidential issues, but like you've done a lot of scanning and kind of came at the marketplace, like Eugene came at the marketplace probably differently than I came at it. And you've right. come up digital health, you know, you know, probably differently than both of us, but how do you, what's your view on, on the appliance, like the health tech appliance that exists in your kitchen? Is it moving quick? Is it moving slow? Is it interesting? So it's, it's moving interesting and it's, I think, accelerating because it needs to. And, and I, I believe it's an, an absolutely uh, fertile opportunity for all of us, even beyond, uh, beyond this call to the folks listening, to really think about family and, and that connectivity of what the appliance can bring. The appliance is, is an anchor, is a beacon. If you think about ovens, if you think about toasters, if you think about a coffee pot, you know, they sit in our kitchen and they're gathering points where we gather together as family. And I view the same for gathering points about collectively helping each other through our journey and through health. And uh, what really struck me when, as I started doing my research and looking at the landscape here, is that positioning work that really can occur to to open people's eyes to help each other, uh, and no better than than the, I'll call it the nuclear and then extended family system. And so, for, as a hard as I'll call it a hardware person, uh, I, I see that that is going to be a space I believe that is going to absolutely explode in the next handful of years. Uh, you know, the, the estimates of which we all know are, you know, by 2025, there won't be enough uh, nurses uh, or, or help in North America, specifically the US, but I think it's a global problem too from some of the, uh, the other people I, I talk to throughout the world. Uh, that this is a real problem. And so, you know, I, I see th that it, it, the art of possible of what we can create is is absolutely there, and it goes beyond just an iPad uh, for a telehealth visit. I think it goes into uh, comp more complex tools that are going to allow people to uh, help family members or help themselves be able to get more facts, more diagnostics, and and, and live uh, you know live better lives ultimately. Uh, I, I think there's a little bit of the delay. Yeah. No, I, I, I actually like your comment about complex tools, but I think, um, you know, to me, the, it's the, the scientific complexity, but this is where a consumer brand brings to the table, right? It's the ease of use and that experience as a family. And I was going to actually, you know, joke, joke around a little bit because you mentioned all kinds of appliances, but you keep forgetting the goddamn Bertesian. I love it. I know, I know. Well, my agent tells me I'm not allowed to give plugs for specific products, only categories. So no, I the, did it. I did it for you. I did it for you. you. I did it for Thank you. you. So uh, exactly. So the for those of you who don't know what the partition is, uh, you can look it up real quickly. Uh, it's a, it's available on Amazon and direct, and direct. But what this is is a home cocktail, craft cocktail maker uh, that we worked with uh, another outside. Uh, inventor uh, entrepreneur and we're able to bring that to the market so uh one of oprah's top uh products in i guess 2019 when we when we launched it and it's continued to do really really well so if you if you're interested in uh relaxing this summer <laughs> you check out the craft cocktails there's always new ones uh, and some of them are exceptionally really good uh, i personally yeah, like the, we, the Air we i think Health Beacon owns three of them. I think we've got three in the offices, you know, so we're, <laughs> we're uh, you know, we're, we're, a vir we're a virtual office, but, you know, the, the, the part of the leadership team is in the same office. So I think we're still, Marina and I will need to, uh, we'll need to get some, um, you know, a Bertesian yeah. in our Your Coach office. So <laughs> yeah, there um, we go. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I kind of following on a little bit of the of, of Jim's question, right? I, I think part of, you know, what healthcare as a system, and I think you probably somewhat experienced this, um, you know, even in the pharma, there's lots of complexity. There's lots of complexity in the process. There's lots of complexity in the tools. 
And I think what consumer brands bring, which is some of the things that we've been talking about in kind of digital therapeutics and the design that Jim's team uh, has put together is actually that simplicity, right? And bringing that consumer-like experience and understanding of what people actually want, right? And I, you know, maybe just would love for your thoughts on this. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's absolutely right. So one of the things when we do industrial design or ID sessions is really bringing that simplicity to the forefront because you, the goal is always that the consumer, so this is for consumer products, can use the product, so plug it in and not read the manual because we know they're not going to anyway. Uh, and so you want the, that simplicity and that roadmap to be there. And that takes a lot of, a lot of hard work. And I, I'm blessed and honored to be teammates with some of the best engineers and ID people at Hamilton Beach. They intentionally design products that walk you through, whether that's through light or sound or, not, or our number system or some sort of chronological system, how to operate the device. And I think if there's anything a consumer brand can bring other than the brand and trust is that know-how in helping consumers walk through tools that are complex and understand them with cues that come from the consumer world. Um, because they're in the end going to need to be able to execute on that. And if it's too complicated, then, then it just won't work. You know, Jim knows this and I can't go into it, unfortunately, because uh, it would be super more interesting and, and like probably everyone would love it. But what, what one of the things that I look for in due diligence when I'm looking, <laughs> thank you, uh, when I'm looking for products is how hard is this to operate? And one of the things that I do is I, I have I have three children. My youngest child just turned nine. Her name's Katie. And I, I call it the Katie test. So I will hand something to my nine-year-old and I said, go. And can she navigate and figure out what this is, right? And if she can't, uh, you know, because I look at so much that I, I get, you know, blinded by, yeah. oh, it's not that hard to do. Uh, but no, I think that you're absolutely right. And that's where that intersection of consumer products, consumer insights, and then taking that ID and bringing that to very complex situations and to digital health is really going to be that beautiful Venn diagram of, of where the, I think the long-term uh, viability and, and the win-win for you know, Jim and I and others in the space. Your, your think, quick comment. I was just going to make a very, very quick one. You know, though, there, you know, we have the iPad babies now, right? I mean, even little babies right. can figure out right. apps now. So, <laughs> yeah, I would be worried. Okay, Katie seems, Katie seems brilliant. So I'd be worried that she could, she might be able to figure a lot of things out <laughs> without, uh, <laughs> without, without, um, you know, that I couldn't figure out. But the, um, I, I thought it was interesting just kind of, you know, getting to know you guys and yet you have that expression uh, in Hamilton Beach is something about, about doing, you know, it was like doing good. What's the, what's the, the quote? Um, it, it's, it's called good thinking. Good thinking. Yeah. Right. Good thinking. So good thinking can be, can be anything uh, at Hamilton Beach, but the idea is behind every, like I'll call it like in a finance meeting, uh, in a, an industrial design meeting, in a product marketing meeting, this idea of bringing good thinking. And good thinking is really opening yourself up and being humble for feedback from others to like really come to the best collective solution for ultimately bringing the best products to life. And, and it's, a, it's a, something that, you know, um, Greg Trepp, our CEO, you know, brings up all the time and he's really fostered that as, as part of our culture. Uh, and I think that that allows us also to look for and explore new partnerships like with Health Beacon or something that's seemingly maybe a little bit different, but there's that degree of good thinking, which is at the heart and at the DNA of everything the, that we try to do. Uh, so one of the things that struck me is, or the one things I kind of, I, like I've learned a lot is the, um, probably like the, the technical complexity of bringing a consumer product into the U S market, you know, yeah. that you, you move like, so from a distance, you know, we I, like almost because I come at it, you know, more kind of health, you know, I built up a healthcare company and a pharmaceutical division. So I think about all the complexity on the regulatory side, the clinical trial side, the um, you know, the sheer science of medicines and, and, you know, reimbursement systems and governmental systems. And they're, you know, obviously very complex, but, 
And then you think, oh, okay, just go to the consumer, you know, let's just cut all that out. We don't need the doctor. We don't need the pharmacist. Let's just sell it right to the consumer. And that should be easy. And, and in some ways, in, in the strategy is easy, but there's a lot of technical things that you got to get right in order to actually yeah. make your product available for sale. Yeah, there, there is. And, and the, the journey is actually somewhat long and predictable. So the fastest you can do it is probably six months, but it can take nine months to a year. And, and it's everything. And like after I say it, I'm sure all the listeners will be like, well, of course, uh, but it, it's everything from how you're going to build the product and move the product into that market, which is actually now a lot harder than it used to be uh, with, with global transportation challenges. But then you have to set up your infrastructure uh, to distribute and, and be able to mail that product because whether it's coming from Amazon or from a 3PL or from your uh, kitchen distribution center, if uh, for those of you that are doing one-offs, it, you still have to have a, a way to do that. And, uh, and, we, and we can do that at, at great scale. And then the, the work that goes into the complexity of selling that into the retail trade, selling that into the pharmacies, selling that into the dot coms, setting that up on Amazon. Anyone who's ever set up a store on Amazon knows how important that is to guard those assets and build them out correctly to sell, to sell your story and position your brand the right way. Because if you don't, someone can take those assets, set up another store, and then you've lost total control of your brand. Uh, so, so yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot lot there. And then the last piece of it, it, which is also not easy, is creating that content and that story for bringing that product to life. And, you know, that's the, that's the part of the journey that Jim and I are currently, um, you know, in right now. Uh, but you have to, you know, develop those, develop those websites, develop those backends, uh, tax tables, all the things you have to do to, to, run, <laughs> to run a right. business. You know, and, uh, I, and none of and none of it goes quickly, Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I I, I actually uh, I always I'd like to say, uh, and I, I don't know whose line I'm stealing, but everything is easy when you're not the one doing it, right? So to kind of core right. healthcare right. people, well, consumer business that's easy. You just you know you know put something out there, just consumers it. just buy, right? <laughs> and you got to only convince yeah. the app store or you know a shelf right. or whatever. And I actually think maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, if you talk to consumer, well, you know, healthcare is easy. There's B2B contract, you sell one, you got, you know, 30 million lives upstream or whatever, right? So <laughs> yeah. I, th right. the reality, I think, and, you know, we've seen quite a lot of healthcare businesses going consumer first and then, you know, kind of pivoting back in with that data. I think, you right. know, I don't think the same leadership team or the same team can do both, right? Um you need to focus, I think, um, uh, no, well, but uh, hear, hear me out. I was, I was heading there. From the perspective <laughs> of, um, I think from a device, you need sub teams and, and yes, it all works mm -hmm. together, but you can't expect the same exact team to just go to market one way and then flip, right? You need to develop yeah. those capabilities over time and all of that. Um, mm. Yeah, I I agree. You know, like the that or that organ. What's really fascinating about it, like the, like you know, it's kind of like how do you get that organizational muscle uh, moving, like the consumer muscle, like Rob saying, can tell the story. You know, all the the distribution and the tax complexity, and you know, integrating with your Shopify account or your your Amazon accounts, or um, but what what the what it, like what's really fascinating though is the opportunity to get super connected to the consumer. And I think that's a lot of digital health companies maybe start that way because, you know, they might come at it from their, so they, they're maybe they're very passionate or very specific about the problem they're trying to solve, you know, clinical problem they're solve. So they get patients around the table and they try to, you know, introduce a solution, a technology, an app, a device, whatever it is. And, um, and so for us now, what's really exciting is that we, like we've, we've, I think we're, I'm not sure how many patient ambassadors, but I think we're close to 11 patient ambassadors that we've brought um, and, and they are, you know, using things like TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and to talk about their story, you know, but they also are on, you know, they're managing their chronic condition, their Crohn's disease is, you know, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, with an injectable and, and how that can, you know, if, if you could get it working, that information can flow back into the core brand. That might be the brand that goes into, um, you know, into your pharmaceutical offering, you know? 
I mean, look, we're, we're all human beings, right? And we uh, transact as consumers and we transact as, you know, unfortunately patients in some life. And, and that's where, you know, we, we always had the discussion, like when I was in, in Big Pharma, it's, well, what's the patient's view? And I'm, I always kind of said, well, pull up a chair because somebody, unfortunately, in the family and we all are consumers and health consumers and patients at some point in time. And do we want to be called patients? Some do, some don't, right? So I think it's just as, you know, we ebb and flow. But anyway. So, yeah, so. Jim, um, Jim I, you know, we can keep going and going, uh, but uh, would love, you know, your, your famous question. Right, so, so Rob, just imagine yourself, um, you know, walking along uh, the beachfront or the waterfront in, in uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, yeah. and, and you just you just have closed a mammoth deal, and it's a huge success. And you see a, kind of an entrepreneur uh, looking a little frazzled, and um, you recognize him. And the young entrepreneur had just graduated from you know he graduated from prestigious schools like Notre Dame or Villanova. Had worked as an accountant. Had carried the bag as a pharmaceutical sales rep and he's come up with the most genius device, simple yet complex device that he wants to uh, start a company and bring it to the market. And he looks, he looks up at you and he says, you know, in, in, you know, what, what advice do you have for me, Rob? What, what would you tell that young entrepreneur? Yeah. Uh, golly. I probably tell him a lot. I, I think the, what I would first tell him would be uh, that, that really, uh, what has helped me in, in my career and the advice that I would give them is that time is our, such a finite resource and how we spend our time and how you spend your life matters. And I, I think um, you can have great ideas, but you need to be surrounded by great people. And so you know, Jim knows I'm a, I'm a coach and at home, I'm a motivational speaker, but uh, I took my three children, but I, I think that it's really surrounding yourself with the right people. And if you aren't surrounding yourself with people that make you the best of you, then you won't be able to achieve everything you can do. And I, in my own career, have seen when I've really excelled and gotten things to really get going, it's because I had those, those things worked out. And that, that applies to everything. And so if you are going to go play a round of golf, you should challenge yourself to play with the three best people that are willing to play with you. If you're going to go into business or try to grow, go, grow a product and with this new thing that you have, you should find the best team and the best people to work with you. If you're going to have a rock band, find the best guitarist that's willing to riff with you, right? And I think, in, and from a personal standpoint, I think from a relationship perspective, surrounding yourself with people that you can trust and people that will challenge you uh, has, has been, in my, my perspective, uh, the most important thing because we only have so much time to achieve what we want to do. And if you don't have that really strong infrastructure of people around you, then, then you're going then you're not going to get there or you're not going to get there as quickly. So, you know, I, I really, it might be a bit of a softer answer, but I, I think that from my perspective, you know, um, that, that who I've surrounded myself with has made all the difference. And there, and you also at times have to acknowledge, wow, this is not a good relationship. This is not a good partnership. I need to pivot and move into one that uh, is going to make me the best version uh, of myself. So. Amazing. Amazing. And I and I'm honored um, that since time is uh, very much of a valued resource that you got to spend it with us. It's yeah, like a backhanded too. compliment to ourselves. So <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Rob, you're officially you an alumni us. of the shot up. You're now officially yeah. alumni of the Shot of Digital Health, so it's a very prestigious club. Yeah, thank <laughs> you're on the wall. You're on the wall. I'm on the wall. Thank you. <laughs> I've been waiting. Awesome. It's, uh, awesome. Well, thank, thank well, you thank for thank joining you both us for having me on. I enjoyed it. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, for the listeners and viewers, hit subscribe, pass it on, and see you next week.